Yo, what's up, guys? I'm your host, Mr. Yuck. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Mr. Yuck Forever. All one word. So, here we are at Alliance Battles Part 2. And the unfortunate thing is that when I was saving my fourth clip against Super Colleague, uh, I got a blue screen right after the attack. So, I was not able to save that, unfortunately. So, we're going to start off here with the sixth attack. You've seen four of them. I think that's the only one, if I'm not mistaken, that I wasn't able to save. So on this one, uh, we're against, is it, hey, Blinken? Hey, Blinken, I guess. So I'm uh, running the same setup. Uh, grunts, commandos, sergeant, medics, riots, machine gunners. And so this is pretty much what I'm, what I'm using all the way up until current. Uh, the actual date of right now is March 11th. And I, I, uh, I'm not sure if this is still the first day or second day that Alliance came out, but, um, look at those giant ass pumpkin heads. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> so like I said, uh, if you haven't checked out part one, make sure you go check that out. Uh, on a side note. If you do like my videos, make sure uh, you leave that like <clears throat> and drop a comment on my video as well. That'd be greatly appreciated. Um, and if you hit me up on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, that is going to be the easiest way to get new details on what I'm up to in Guns Up, if I'm coming out with any new videos or anything like that. Um, I pretty much post on Twitter first, even though I don't got a lot of followers on there. I post all my shit on Twitter first, and then post stuff on the forums, and then I post my videos on YouTube. So if you want to get the earliest access to what the hell that I'm up to, um, please go follow me on Twitter. It'd be uh, greatly appreciated. I mean, it's super awesome. And it's just uh, Twitter at Mr. Double Underscore Yuck a Double Underscore. So. <clears throat> So most of the bombs are out of the way. I'm deciding to queue up already. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I can't wait for specials. You know, no real danger to my truck. <clears throat> but uh, you know, I, I, I necessarily don't always like just waiting for specials, you know, and having all of his units queue up in the back of his base. Sometimes I like uh, to just go right in on a super aggressive approach sometimes i like doing it on the the first hq squad you know but there's a couple couple barrels i needed to pop and shit so so we burn our rally flag looking good got a couple focus fires got three decoys we're gonna use our first one right here Boom. We're just gonna melt through walls. That's another reason why I love this setup. You can just melt through walls so quick. So, I uh, want to burn my two aerial specials right there. Stuff's looking real sexy. I get a tear gas out of that as well. And, uh, you know, there's that random popping of those barrels you gotta, gotta love from the commandos. The commandos and machine gunners. So it looks like we're gonna have an adequate amount of, uh, of decoys here. And no iron lungs. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. I was trying to hold off on my focus fire right here, just just for the first little engagement. Uh, sometimes I use focus fires like really early. Um, sometimes I wait, and uh, the reason why sometimes I wait is I like my guys to just kind of be attacking just sort of everything, and instead of like trying to focus on a centralized point. And that's kind of what I wanted to do right there. I just wanted all of my troops to push up, you know, kind of thin out his front lines of his defense right there without uh, focus fired in, uh, in the back like I do sometimes. So, um, Not a real difficult base. Um, not a lot of trouble with it. Lost three veterans. Uh, it was 
uh, you know, not not too difficult to be honest. Um, and and with the focus fire right there, that first initial one, yo, that really helped me cut through that choke point that I wanted. You know, I wanted to go down right there, and so managing to get through like all those walls, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So, uh, I'd give the base difficulty maybe uh maybe like a three or four. You know, didn't um didn't he really suffer uh, any sort of like major threat or anything where I was like oh man this is like a 50-50 battle where it could go either way so I felt really confident in the outcome of that and, and queuing up and not having to wait for more specials so uh, Ardor Destomago I guess is your name I don't know I'm bad with pronouncing people's names so I'll probably butcher a bunch <laughs> throughout all of season one so, I'm sorry if you watch my video and you're like, yo, that's me. You don't even know how to say my name. It's like, dude, my bad, bro. My bad. So, uh, like always, man, you got to grunt spam it up in the beginning. Of course, you all do that. You all know what's going on here in the beginning. And, uh, you know, that's just one other thing. Um, while well, I've been trying to really uh, use, like, an aggressive approach as well. Is uh while I'm putting out those videos, you know, I don't want to, I don't want a lot of videos where like I'm, I'm grunt spamming for like five, six minutes, and it's like, it's like, damn, like, like your vi these videos are pretty boring, bro. <laughs> like you're hardly doing anything besides grunt spamming the earned specials, and then finally get these guys. So, so this base uh, seems eerily familiar to a base that I've seen before. It's kind of interesting. He's got bombardiers and snipers uh, shooting through the crack in the rock. Uh, sniper tower up north. Sniper tower on bottom by rock. I'm pretty sure I've seen this setup somewhere. Pretty, pretty sure. And then uh, sniper towers on... Um, north side of mid rock so I'm thinking okay um I've seen this before and uh, I, I think I know what's going on I think I know how I'm gonna beat this so we're just gonna try to take out another HQ squad even try to get rid of this barrel And right there is where I realize, hey, that sniper tower is going to be able to um, to hit my truck. It is going to be able to. So I don't want to take too much damage from that because I know that these um, these other couple sniper towers uh, might be able to get me as well. Got to save my truck's integrity. I don't I don't want that thing to drop below 50% here early on in the battle. So I do end up getting a uh, another rally there. So that's looking good. I can't even remember why I had a chemist. I I don't even remember. I just decided to keep one just for shits and giggles. So I'm thinking, should I leave the bombardiers? I, I want to try to leave those bombardiers at the beginning. I think my troops are going to be able to see them through the crack in the rock. They're up, they're up pretty close. Let's try to go ahead and get the um, the snipers in the back. They're a triple chevron. It does distract the bombardier. My commandos are able to see through the crack in the rock. And already right there, that's a nice clean sweep of his front, um, his front line stuff. Man. I mean, looking real solid. On this, instead of rallying my troops back, I'm going to try to rally all the troops I just summoned out of my truck forward. Now, we still got that sniper tower there on the bottom. So, I got to make sure it's a clean sweep of the base. Because uh, reinforcing my, my units uh, is not going to happen. But he doesn't really have anything back in his back layer. Everything's just centralized in his uh, second layer. Use the focus fire there for some extra points. Just in case something crazy happens, I decided to summon up some more troops, rally back. And uh, yeah, this is still like before patch uh, 
uh, 2.32 came out, so it's like my truck's sh shooting at tank traps and shit right now. Everything is looking good. With the drop of another decoy, no if, ands, or buts about it. Yo, got this one in the bag. Got plenty of triple chevron still up. And then, of course, at the end, instead of summoning more big troops, if you know it's a guaranteed win, just keep summoning grunts. Uh, it'll help um, increase your overall score at the very end of the battle because you're going to save on munitions. So, uh, you know, having a higher munition count at the very end of your battle is going to help uh, earn some additional points right there. Lost four veterans. Uh, not too difficult. Uh, pretty, pretty easy setup. Um, and right there, you know, I've been, I've been leaving that up at the very end of the battle just for a couple split seconds to see, you know, what points went where in my overall score. <clears throat> and, uh, so, uh, not, not too difficult, like I said. Probably give it a, oh, I probably give it a three just cause, um, it was a good initial first choke point. But um, his, his guys were too close to the gap in the rock, and some of his troops could see some of the other ones. So uh, just just, just kind of slaughtered it right there. And with a couple decoys, I mean, you could just totally devastate that first engagement. Um, so our next guy is V. Can Cyan. And the other thing on the, on the last base was um his last layer uh was just really soft uh so if, if you got past the first layer it's it's pretty much over it was a hard uh a hard front two layered base is kind of what i like to call it you know there's there's typically like five different types of bases in my opinion um you got single layer walk around single layer two layers three layers and then full bases um, but to get back to this base real quick before we jump into that, um, I already know things are going to go good in this base. Uh, I mean, his veterans are walking forward. So I know I don't have to deal with any veterans uh, later on in this base. So that's always good to know. But uh, he had like a, a two-layer base, like I was saying. Uh, heavy on the first layer, probably like, you know, 80, 85, like 90% on first layer. And his, his second layer is really weak. So once you once you get done with the first layer, bro, there's there's nothing gonna stop me in that second layer. If you can get past that, there's there's nothing there. So so we got commandos, we got barrels on the inside on the path, and uh, if you don't know, that's pretty much just a grunt spam to get rid of that. There's my truck firing at random tank traps. So we just gonna keep grunt spamming it up. And it's kind of hard to stop a um, to stop a grunt spam from like popping a bunch of your barrels. <clears throat> In fact, uh, my clan member X Bino uh, really helped set up a a good base uh, defense for myself. He kept uh, he kept attacking me whenever he, he would see my name on the list. You know, he'd message me. He's like, "Hey, you know, do uh, do you want me to attack you again?" And I was like, yeah, you know, I want you to go full force. You know, I want you to, uh, you know, tell me, tell me what's right with my base and tell me what's wrong with my base. You know, that's a good thing about being in an alliance, you know, uh, is that, that friendly advice, that criticism. And like he kept telling me, he's like, yo, you know, like, like your base is vulnerable to grunt spam. He's like, you got to stop that. Like your setup is good, but if people just keep grunt spamming, um, then your, your base is pretty much going to get wrecked. And, th and that's how it was for a while, you know. So uh, I definitely had to find a way around um, uh, fixing that. Because, like, look at this. I mean, I'm already, like, to uh, to this guy's, you know, only layer. You know, this is a, uh, a one-layer, single choke point base. My truck's just stuck way back here. So I'm trying, I was trying not to summon all of my units. 
um, too early. I was hoping I could get rid of that uh, tank trap, but I go ahead. I look at his uh, his single layer, and uh, it, it's not very daunting. I want to get rid of that barrel right there. This guy's really got nothing at a uh, at his one layer. If anything, what he should have done was uh, kept his veterans to where you know at least they'd be back there on like sandbags. He's queuing up units that uh, take a long time to come out of tents. So I don't think his um, third spawn count is out. So everything's everything's looking real solid right here. Uh, we still got a focus fire. Managed to queue up a decoy. Uh, we pick one up in the beginning. It queues up another one. So we got five decoys. And a focus fire right now. Not too many grunts. Yo, we got a lot of big units. Uh, it's pretty much over for this guy. So you can see, yeah, he's got a couple uh, Rocketeers, Bombardiers, obviously no triple vets. And, and with five decoys, you know, it's like, oh, dude, it's pretty much over. So Let's go ahead and get rid of the first sandbag that's going to engage in our troops first. Then we'll get rid of these guys. The northern bombardiers can see those guys. One more decoy on those dudes. And now for the most part, we should just be able to have uh, free reign on, uh, on wiping this guy's base. My troops are nicely bunched up. Nothing to stop them. Still got two decoys. Not, not even worried about really deploying them. I'm just looking for like some extra points to be honest. So let's blow through some couple extra walls. Uh, right there, typically I would have um, just targeted the mortar. I'm not, I'm not sure why I didn't. Um, you know, throwing out a random decoy just because I can. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this guy a, a one-star difficulty. Uh, pretty easy, man. Pretty easy for my setup. Uh, blow right through it. So, uh, if you guys like the video, please leave a, leave a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below if, uh, if you want to. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And there's plenty more uh, to come. Got some uh, good battles coming up soon. And uh, until next time, I'll catch you guys later.